Cause it was dead If I let her let me squeeze you in my arms If I let her call me Wanna dance? Yes! I thought you were someone else So, what is it with me? Let me clue you in, Pat. Unsightly facial hair. Ooh, but you can do something about it. I can. Why don't you go see Mr. Bruce at the House of Beauty? Thanks, Sue. One thing. This is Mr. Bruce. Girl, if you're not becoming to him, you should be coming to me. So why don't you just march your buns right down here to the House of Beauty, Monday through Saturdays, 9 to 7. And I don't work on Sundays. <laughs> Wanna dance? Sure. Say, where are you being all my life? <laughs> That's me, Mr. B, at the house of B. Tired of ordinary television? Don't touch that dial. SCTV is now on the air. Starring John Candy. Joe Flaherty. Eugene Levy. Andrea Martin, Catherine O'Hara, Dave Thomas, and featuring Harold Ramis. Television like you've never seen it before. This is the SCTV Television Network. It's 6 a.m. and time for the SCTV AM News. I'm Floyd Robertson. I'm Floyd Robertson. And I'm Earl Cannonberry. And this is the news. Today's top story... <laughs> Wake up. What's with you? Today's top story, Dr. Hugo Fitzbinder, 85-year-old winner of the Nobel Peace Prize, died today in Salzburg, Austria. Dr. Fitzbinder was the last of the five people who fully understood Albert Einstein's theory of relativity. The International Academy of Science has therefore proclaimed that, from now on, nothing is relative. <laughs> Earl. Earl. And that's the news. It's not the news. Speak. Another revolution in Hungary today as Russian tanks rolled through the city of Budapest, trampling innocent pedestrians, uh, women, and children. They didn't care what they rolled over. They drove into the city and then went home. Apparently it wasn't a revolution at all. They just wanted to make sure those Hungarians were on their toes, according to Soviet ambassador. Ola? Alexei who? Alexei Koznersen. Early this morning at Cedars of Lebanon Hospital, celebrated Warner Brothers cartoon characters Porky and Petunia Pig succumb to the swine flu. <laughs> Interment will be held tomorrow morning at the Jimmy Dean Pork Sausage Factory. <laughs> Earl. <laughs> Earl. Earl. And that's the news. That's not the news. What's the matter with you? I'm sorry, Floyd. I happen to be tired. I was up till 4 a.m. doing the late-night news report. And were you there? No, you don't have it in your contract. You don't do those late-night news reports, no. I make minimum, I make scale. 200 cheap dollars a week. And out of that, I've got commission, I've got union dues, I've got income tax to pay. $40 a week I give to my mother, and what's left? 128 damn dollars a week. And what do you make? A quarter of a million dollars a year. $7,000 a week. And you just sit there behind that desk in that green jacket and that pukey-looking tie, looking glamorous. Well, I'm worth every penny I make. I carry you. So? So what? So that's the news. <laughs> that is the news. <laughs> Two, one, two, one, two, one.
bodies. I'm Sister Mary Innocent, physical training instructor for the Cellulite Sisters. Now we all know the human body is a vile, disgusting corporal blob. A real breeding ground for temptation and evil. But as long as we're stuck in our bodies, we might as well keep them in good shape, huh? Okay, let's start with a real trouble spot for most practicing Catholics. The knees. A little genuflection exercise should do that. Okay, kneel, bless. Up and rest, kneel, bless, up and rest, kneel, bless, up and rest. Good, how does that feel? You should feel a warm glow spreading up the legs and throughout the thighs. <laughs> feel too good. Okay, now I've received a lot of letters from people asking me about excessive guilt. And I have a little exercise you'll probably want to try for that. Okay, and prostrate, and grovel, grovel, grovel. with a friend whipping you, or you can spread broken glass on the floor beneath you. Good for the soul and great for the abdomen muscles. Okay. Oh, we're about out of time here, I see. Uh, listen, I just want to remind you, uh, keep up that 40-day fast, and uh, if you can, why don't you jog around a barren wilderness whenever you can, okay? I'm going to finish up with a little communion exercise. Until next time, this is Sister Mary Innocent wishing you a very heavenly body. And Neil, come out. Get to the hip. Kids, here he is, Mr. Science. Mr. Science, Mr. Science. Oh, I swear she was only 16. That's what she said. I, I'm in a, oh. Oh. What do you want? Oh. It's Donald. <laughs> Are you going to teach us something today, Mr. Science? That's right. That's right. Uh, we're going to learn uh, today to make coffee. Go over there. Over there. Why coffee? Never mind why coffee. Just do it. Now, you put the kettle on there and turn it on. And it boils. You know why it boils? No. Because it's hot. That's why. Now, come on over here. <laughs> now, you got a cigarette? No. I got one here. Never mind. Here's another experiment. This is, uh, Combustion, Sam. Now, see this a lighter? See that? Now I light it. Mmm. And that end gets hot, and that's combustion. Then you suck it in your lungs. You know where your lungs are? You do? Yeah. I know where one of mine is. It's in a hospital in a jar. Never mind that. All right. Where's my coffee? Come on, hurry up, hurry up. Eddie, you gotta move faster than that. You know that. Now look, if scientists fooled around all the time, where would we be today? In a cave. Wouldn't be such a bad idea either. Living in a cave with it. Come on, hurry up, will you? You're never gonna make it, you know that. Come here. It's good. Oh, that's good coffee. You're learning, you know that? You're a bright kid. But you know what? Mr. Science is very tired, so why don't you get lost? But you promised to teach us something. That's right, I did. And I keep my promises, don't I? So yeah. turn on the TV. We'll learn about TV. <laughs> it's a dislike Freud intention. Isn't that funny? <laughs> That's smart, isn't it? Freud presented Ibsen with a, a whopping bill. I don't know why you get colors, because there's scanners in there. Use your head. You gotta learn to use your head. Little creep. What the hell am I doing more than show for? I'm rich. I don't know this. And now here's Larnell Jefferson with the black perspective on the news. Uh, there'll be a meeting uh, there, the Afro-American Legal Aid Society at 2,211 States Avenue uh, discussing legal aid for the non-white residents of Greenfield County. 
Uh, Reverend Jesse Jackson was in town uh, yesterday discussing Operation Push with the Greenfield County residents. Wait a minute, uh, hold on. Hey, hey, what are you? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, obviously this isn't Larnell Jefferson. Uh, as you probably know, it's Bob Clark, our weatherman. Bob, what are you doing? Larnell's sick. I'm just filling in for him. Why don't you get somebody black? You're right. He's the only black announcer we got. Besides, thanks for telling everybody I'm not black. I'm sure they wouldn't have noticed if you hadn't made such a big thing out of it. Oh, come on, Bob. Are you kidding me? Look at that outfit you've got on. That's the most racist thing I've ever seen in my life. Racist? Yeah. Let me tell you about racist. Since I've had this makeup on, I've noticed people have been treating me differently. Yeah, talking down to me as if I'm some kind of different person. Well, I don't blame them. That kind of thing went out with Al Jolson. Jolson was a hunter. You have no right to talk to me like that. I'm not coming back here to do anything until I get some respect. Respect. Fine. Um, I'd like to apologize, ladies and gentlemen, for that tasteless display of white arrogance. Uh, I can assure you something like that will never happen again. And now, here's Erica Jameson with the feminist perspective on the news. Hi. Well, there was a women's lib meeting today on the auditorium... Wait a minute, hold on. Kids. What, Earl, what are you doing? Why, whatever do you mean? I'm not Earl. Here, Earl, Just... you know it. What are you doing? <clears throat> Jessica phoned in sick, Floyd. I thought maybe I could fill in for her and people wouldn't notice. So I'm sorry. I offended forget anybody. Forget it. Just forget it. <laughs> now, that's all the news there is tonight, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry. Uh-oh, if you rip this expense to SCTV. I met a man today. He was clothed like a duke and he had the face of a raccoon. At first he frightened you. You're not eating your beets. I don't like beets. I've tried to eat them, but I can't. An SCTV before school special. A cautionary tale. Beauty and the Beats. Coming soon. I'm Guy Lafleur. I'm Daryl Siddler. I use a Daryl Siddler hockey stick. I use a Daryl Siddler hockey stick. Cut! Take two. I'm Guy Lafleur. I'm Daryl Siddler. And I use a Daryl Siddler hockey stick. I use a Guy Lafleur hockey stick. Hey, Guy, how about some cornerbacks, eh? All right, All right sure hey, thing, Daryl. Oh, boy. oh, boy, I bet these are good, huh? Oh, Got yeah. Real mug flavor. Smells good, too. Mm -hmm. Well, I can't do these things. Cut! I'm sorry. They're hiding my gums. You lose your plate, Daryl? Yeah, I lost my plate in Boston. Ah, <laughs> you lost your dentures in Boston. Why don't you push it down with some milk and mush it into your puss? Cornerbacks <laughs> take three. I'm Guy Lafleur. I'm Daryl Sittler. And I use a Daryl Sittler hockey stick. I use a Guy Lafleur hockey stick. Hey, Guy, how about some cornerbacks? Eh? An excellent idea. All right, eh? Let's try some mm. of this. Oh, it looks yummo. Sure is. Mm. It smells so good, too. Mm. See what's going on? It's got poor just some French. Cat! I don't speak French, I'm sorry. What's your How's problem? Ah, oh, look at it in English. It's on English. Well, what so. the hell's it got two languages on the fourth channel? I only speak English because it's a bilingual country. It is not both, my friend. One language, one goddamn song. God says, we. Thank you for Hi, I'm Guy Lafleur. I'm Daryl Siddler. And I use a Daryl Siddler hockey stick. Is Guy Lafleur hockey stick? Is Guy wants to play with it? Yeah, sure thing, Daryl. Hey, this stuff looks A-OK, -okay, huh? Yeah, sure does. Well, I could try some mm, malt flavor and everything. And some Pepsi Cola with it? Hey! Look, that's supposed to be, Daryl. Oh, God, that's a joke. Hey, 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 come on! Hey! Wednesday nights at 9, Masterpiece Theatre presents a series of plays specifically adapted for television. The first, Under Parsley, a moving portrait of a family of Welsh garnish farmers. Well, look at you, Di, picking at your food. What's wrong with you, then? The rain came again last night, girl, and wiped out the North Maraschino cherry field. They laid off over 300 men today. Oh... Well, I didn't want to say anything, but this is the last of the parsley. But there's plenty of croutons up at Pontypridd. Oh, well, the croutons and the dill pickles are gone. They were wiped out by fire. Well, it's a long, lean winter, then. You're telling me? Good news, boyos! They've reopened the oil of mines. Ah, you and the boys better get down there before all the jobs are gone. 
Come on, boys. Good news couldn't have come at a better time. Emlyn Llewellyn Wilkins Jones, you're great for news. No, not the olive mines. I'll have no son of mine working in the pits. Poor Ronnie Gwynn died of pimental poisoning. I remember the funeral. His coffin was so light, he only needed three pallbearers. Never mind, girl. We'll be all right. Come on, boys. Oh. <laughs> Masterpiece Theatre presents another in this series of specifically adapted for television productions, F. Fats Fitzgerald's classic novel, The Great Fats. Jay, darling, you look like you're putting on a little weight. When I feel great. We'll just be after the party. I don't want to miss the buffet. Well, there's lots of potato salad. <laughs> And another dramatic special adapted from the ballet Swan Lake. I'm so glad I didn't shoot you in that first night. I guess I'll never understand just why I love you so much. Waiter, check please. Very good, sir. You'll forgive my saying so, sir. We don't get many swans in here. These prices, you won't get many more. <laughs> here, keep the change. Thank you, sir. I love the way you quack. Drives me crazy. Join me this season on Masterpiece Theater. Oh, I must have slept through another day. How do you do it, Denise? I'm knocking my brains out nine to five for hundred and twenty dollars a week, and you're living like a queen. What's your secret? It's simple, Rochelle. Prostitution. The work is fun, the money's great, and you get to pick your own hours. Get smart, Rochelle. Put your money where your mouth is. Do you think I could do it? Sure. How's it going, Irma LaDuce? Tree bien, Denise. Come on, Thunder Thighs. Time is money. For information, write Hooker Handle. Box 96, New York City, New York. Tonight, a specially adapted for television presentation of the memoirs of famed Russian playwright Anton Chekhov. Boris died just 73 years ago today. Still, I cannot think of it calmly. Seems only yesterday. But you, Sonia, you're already wearing white. I am radiant today. More beautiful than ever. I feel younger than yesterday, or even the day before yesterday. I feel younger than everyone. I have lived a long time. They were arranging my funeral when I was a young child. But I did not die. I will keep on living. I'll live longer than everyone. It's true, I must say. Allow me to add, if I may, to be sure. I cannot but agree with you there. Quiet! Did you hear him? Anton is coming. Anton Chekhov is really coming. Do you think you remember how amazing I am? My father was a peasant, an idiot. He taught me nothing, he understood nothing, thank you. All he did was beat me when he was drunk, and always with a big stick. He had a big stick! I must say, allow me to add, if I may, to be sure. I cannot but agree with you there. You knew my father? No, I don't think so, dear boy. Even so, someday all men will have jobs. We will all work seven days a week, 12 hours a day, and no holidays. Except me, of course. I've never had a job and don't intend to start now. That's true, I may say. Shut up! <laughs> 
memory of my husband. Boris died just 73 years ago today. And he thought he'd live longer than me. <laughs> I've been waiting for Chekhov all night. I haven't slept at all. But I'm still radiant. Am I not? <laughs> Captain! Chekhov! You've come! The good doctor is back. Dr. Chekhov is here. Dr. Chekhov. Dr. Chekhov. There must be some mistake. I'm not Dr. Chekhov. I am Mr. Chekhov. Check up the transporter room. With the rest of the landing party. Scotty here. We've got a wee malfunction in the transporter. We'll have you back aboard in a minute. I seem to have landed in 19th century Russia. Oh, is my beautiful Moscow. Was it as radiant as I am? There's many old friends there. Tell me, are they still dead? I must resist this torturous cling on nightmare. Beat me up! I must resist! <laughs> We're locking on your coordinates. Beat me up! Beat me up! <laughs> they beam the torturous cling on nightmare up onto the ship. I'm radiant up here too. Sick beta bridge. Jim, get these people out of here. Boris died just 73 years ago. It's true, I must agree. Shut up, for God's sakes. What's happening? You see, these people have jobs, they work. They're all over engineering too. Captain, we're losing control of the ship. <laughs> The automobile just isn't designed to carry long. 21 84 84 or send 995 plus three dollars shipping to Solar Guard, Box 8325, West Palm Beach, Florida. Installs in seconds. That's 1 800 621 8484. Don't mix. 